One of the things I like about Linux is I can actually use my laptop computer as a media center. And uh, so one thing I like to do is uh, I have an external hard drive where, that I like to save all of my DVDs. So I can back up my DVDs, have all of the video stored on a hard drive for easy access. That way I don't have to go through the trouble of you know, digging through my disc collections, that sort of thing. I can just easily navigate to the video that I want to get to. So today, I'm going to show you how to rip your DVDs on Ubuntu and its derivatives on Spatry's Cup of Linux. All right, let's begin. First, uh, you're going to need a program called Canine Copy to start this process. And uh, this demonstration that I'm doing today uses some unconventional means. Uh, this is because I like how Canine Copy rips the data from my DVD, but I do not like its output. So I'm going to use both Canine Copy today and I'm going to use OpenShot Video Editor to actually do the editing. Let's begin. Okay, first, you need to make sure that you have K9 Copy installed. So, let's go to our terminal, and we will issue this command. sudo apt get install K9 Copy. We'll ask for the password. It did not install, obviously, because I already have it. Uh, I already have the latest version installed, and as a matter of fact, I uh, threw it. I think I threw a PPA, and I can't remember. Okay, and then you will also need OpenShot Video Editor. So let's go ahead and do that as well. That's a sudo apt get install OpenShot. Okay, I have that installed as well. I just want to show you those commands. You can also go into your Synaptic Package Manager or the Ubuntu Software Center to obtain these. Okay, now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and open up K9 Copy Assistant. This is a nice little wizard that will simplify the process of actually grabbing these files. Let's go ahead and load our DVD into the player. And it will take a moment here for it to read. Okay, I can hear it running, so we know we have it loaded. Let's press next. Okay, now the backup is going to go to a folder. Now, you can select to rip and encode DVD, and what this program will do is it will rip the portions or tracks that you wish, and then it will encode them for you. I did not like the quality, and I like to have a good small file size to work with. So I'm just going to tell it to rip the DVD without encoding. Now, one thing that I'm going to have to mention here is that you need to be able to view uh, in, uh, encrypted disks, okay? And there are tutorials online. I'll put that in the show notes below, uh, letting you know what it is that you need so that you can so that you can view these and decrypt them, so that you can rip these things. Okay, now uh, the DVD is tripping the rift movie, but I'm going to rename this as something else. I'm going to call this test. Okay, so we're going to save that as test mpg. It wants to put it in my home directory, which is fine. We're going to select next. Okay, now, if you press length here, you're going to notice that it's going to organize all of these titles by time and 
the longest time is your actual movie. Now for demonstration purposes only, I am going to just capture the preview. So let's do that. The preview is seven minutes, I believe. So I'm going to select tile, Title 7. Let me uh, tilt this up. And as you can see here, there is only one item in Title 7. It's a seven minute movie. Okay, and if we hit play, we can actually view it. Okay, this isn't a preview, maybe this is a how it was made kind of thing. Okay, that's cool. But this is what we want to do to uh, for the demonstration, so this is sufficient. All right, let's go next. It's going to ask us uh, what audio there is. Now in the main movie, you're probably going to have more than one choice, and there's probably going to be different languages that you can choose from. In this case, there's only one, so that's okay. We're going to select next. All right, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to change the shrink factor at all. I want the best quality video to work with in my video editor. Let's select finish. Now, I'm not going to view the preview, and it doesn't show up anyway on this because when my screencaster is uh, recording, What's happening is it's not going to show the preview very well, or at all, so. Okay, and this has captured it nice and quick. Now, something I need to mention here. Uh, when we captured that file, if there was more than one chapter in that sequence, then it's going to capture each of those chapters as individual files. In this case, there was only one. Okay. Next, we'll go ahead and open up our OpenShot video editor. Now let's go ahead and save this project first. I'm going to call this test. Okay, and then I'll save it to the desktop, that's fine. Now take note of how long your movie is. If your movie is two hours long, uh, that's how long you want your project to be. In this case, I, I know I just captured a uh, preview. It was seven minutes long, so the project length of 10 minutes is just fine. Let's save that project. Now we can go ahead and import our video file. And that was stored in my home directory. Test chapter one. We'll add that. Excellent. Now, we can just go ahead and drag this to our timeline. Now, if there were, were more than one chapter, then you would definitely want to seam them all together. In this case, let's just pretend there were two chapters. You would just take the second chapter and you would just put it on your timeline and it will seam them together nice and neatly. Uh, let's go ahead and remove that clip. Okay, now we're ready to render. This is why I'm using OpenShot because it does such a magnificent job of rendering, and it does it it does it faster than uh, my test runs on this uh, on this uh, Ripper. So let's go ahead and hit the uh, button here. We're gonna call that test. That's fine. And what I like to do is, I like to save in the web format at the uh, 29.975. We're going to select YouTube High Def. 
and high quality. Believe it or not, it makes an MP4 that is perfect for viewing on your home computer. So I like this. But you have other options as well. You can do it in DVD quality or Blu-ray quality. So the choice is yours, pretty much. Then we'll just go ahead and export the video. All right, our video has finished encoding, and here it is. It has a really nice sharp picture. I like it an awful lot. And I'm overall pleased with the results. Now, you may see the video uh, chopping up a little bit here. That's because I've got a lot of processes running. But I can assure you that uh, the quality and the sound is absolutely amazing. So this is why I choose to use the Open Shot Video Editor for doing my transcoding. Well, if you thought this was useful to you, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, uh, catch me on Facebook and Twitter. I have links down below if you're viewing this on my channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.